Hello, welcome back to Sophisticates by Mary. This week I'm going to show you what I did with those rice paper sales that I made last week. I started off this cake with making some candy molds. I have some mermaid tails and a shell. And I also have some starfish molds that I use the candy melts in varying colors. I used blue and purple and gold to make the decorations. First of all, you need to melt your candy melts. And I added a little bit of blue to the white to diffuse the deepness of those colors. I just melt mostly white and then add a little bit of the colors so that they're a little bit more pastel. And I wanted the tips of these to be a different color than the rest of the tail. I wanted to have some uh, graduation in colors. So first of all, I brushed on the tips of the tails and then I allowed those to set up in the freezer for about 10 minutes before I filled the rest of the mold. Now I did some blue ones and I did some purple um, alternating the colors. I wasn't sure what colors I wanted to use until I saw the whole thing come together so I, I always make more. And I wanted to brush the tips of the tail color down so it looks a little bit more not a sharp line in between the two colors. Now when you're using a brush like this, that candy melts, they like to set up pretty quick. So you have to brush or clean off that brush quite a bit. Just a forewarning. Now this shell mold, I actually used, I made myself a while ago. I just used an actual shell and then I used molding putty to make a mold out of it. And I've never used it for anything but cakes. And just scrape off that extra. Now these are, since this mold is a little older, it's a little bit rigid and kind of hard to get your molds out, your, your candy molds out. Um, I also have some starfish molds there that you can see that are really cool because I, I really like how they're very they're made from real starfish, you know, the dried up starfish that you can find in the store, in the craft stores, but they wouldn't come out. The, the legs kept breaking off, so I used a different mold. Now, you don't want to cut the hole in your bag too big or the, else the candy melts, the melted candy melts will come pouring out and it's hard to control. This mold here has an actual fin on it, so I filled that in. Any areas that are going to be deeper or actually more towards the surface, the outside surface, when they're demolded, you want to fill those in first so that you can get any air pockets out of those. Because if you trap air in there, they're not going to come out right. Now I tap them on the table a little bit just to get some air bubbles out. Same thing, if you get air bubbles out in any of the texturized surfaces that are going to be on the outside, like the scales, you can easily get air bubbles trapped in there too. So tap out those air bubbles. And here's that other mold that I have. It's a rigid, plastic rigid one, but once your candy melts have uh, frozen set up, they pop right out. Just scrape off any excess on this also. You can always, always break it off afterwards when you demold them, unmold them, I guess would be the way to say it at the end. Now, I wasn't sure how I was going to put these in, but I knew that they might need to stick up a little higher to be seen once I get the waves on the cake. So I am using some more melted candy melts to get a skewer to stick to the back. And I'm just using that mold to prop it up so that it's drying correctly. I added a little bit of gold to some of the scales and along that, um, I don't know what you would call that, fin. That raised section that I was talking about earlier. And I wanted to add a little bit of shading to these. I wanted them to not be just matte. I think it just kicks it up a notch when you add some petal dust or coloring of some kind. So I went around the outside edges and any recessed areas that might be shadowed. I had the two different colors of purple, but I decided on this one it was a little closer to the color of the tail. I wanted it to be more subtle instead of, wow, there's two different colors of purple. You know what I mean? This is a long video. 
There's a lot of footage in this video, so I sped it up quite a bit. Sorry about that. Hopefully you're able to follow along just fine. I made way more than I needed. In fact, my kids had a heyday eating the extras. They love that melted, the, the candy melts. It reminds them of childhood, is what my 16-year-old said. <laughs> they had a lot of um, candy melt decorations on their cakes, apparently. I'm even shading the shell. And then adding some more gold accents on the tips of the tails. And like always, that's just your, your gold highlighter with um, vodka to make a paint. But you could use Everclear or even lemon extract to get the same, basically the same effect. I find the Everclear is better, but it's also harder to find and more expensive. So there they are all done. And I added some shimmer dust to them also. I guess I did not get that footage in here, but I added a little bit of shimmer dust. Now, I did do a video last week. I will try to attach a, a card on here to a link to that video. I'll try to remember to do that. Um, on how I, more detail at how I made these sugar, these um, rice paper sales. But this is wonton wrappers or rice paper. Now, there's different kinds of rice paper. There's the sheets of rice paper that you can use to add print on for cakes. Um... And then there's this kind of a wonton wrapper rice papers. These absorb water and they don't disintegrate. The other kind of rice paper that you find in sheets will just melt in water, too much water. So I would stay away from that. And this is just plain water that I'm adding some diluted, well, I guess when you add your food coloring, gel-based food colorings to your water, it dilutes it. And I added two different colors because I wanted a little bit of varying coloring in that also and you just want to submerge those rice paper sheets in the water there's a pattern on those rice rice paper before you have um, dipped them in the water but it kind of that goes away when it's absorbed the water leave it in there for about a minute and then you can take it out and mold it on your crunched up pieces of parchment there are other ways to do sales you can use silicone mats if you like, but I wanted this to be a little bit more random. So I used crunched up parchment paper. And I stuck the skewer in there, just wrap that wet rice paper around it, and as it dries, it will firm up. And I added some petal dust shimmer onto these as well. And I did that before they were dry. You can do it after they're dry also. If you do it after they're dry, you get kind of a more even coverage. And I would let them set up for a few minutes before you do this because if your fluffy brush gets a little bit wet because the rice paper is wet, it gets really sticky. Let some of that stickiness go away a little bit because you're going to pop them in your oven, your lowest setting, mine is 170 degrees. Put them in your, low, in your lower setting in your oven for about, these took about mm, two hours to dry. You can just put them on a cookie sheet or even straight on the rack. It's low enough. It's going to be fine. Um, but, or you can leave them to air dry for up to 48 hours if you have that kind of time. But I don't have that kind of time or that kind of patience. So I popped them in the oven. And this parchment paper should peel away fairly easily. You might get a little stuck here and there in the folds. But just take your time. Work on it gradually. Or get a skewer or a toothpick and try to pry it out of there if you have to. That one broke, but that's okay. I just saved it just in case I needed something for fill. Now I'm going to fill and stack and crumb coat my cakes. This part is quite a bit speed up because, um, I mean, you see this once, you've seen them all, right? But maybe this is your first time watching it, so you might want to know what I'm doing. So I do use a thickened buttercream in the middle to keep it from spilling out the outside edges. You could use just the thickened buttercream just and a, a dam around and do a softer filling if you want. That's fine too, just as long as you have something to keep the filling from spilling out the sides. Nothing worse than bulges. I hate bulges. But uh, thickened buttercream just means I add more powdered sugar to it. Almost to the point where you can roll it on the surface like, like um, 
a log of fondant. You can almost do that. And I have done that and then put it on. And just make sure your layers are lined up. Sometimes they aren't, like that apparently isn't, but I do go back and fix that. Um, use a little bit more buttercream. I wouldn't use the thickened to crumb coat unless it's just what spilled out, you know, what pushes out the sides a little bit. Um, it's a little harder to spread around. It really kind of can tear into your cake sometimes. And just remove the excess and then you pop these in your freezer for 20, for, I'm sorry, freezer for about 10 minutes or your refrigerator for about 20 minutes until the buttercream is dried to the touch and add another layer. I ended up going in and doing, I think, three layers of buttercream on these because for some reason it was humid. My buttercream was not wanting to work with me. Same recipe, do it all the time, but sometimes it just acts different and I just chalk it up to atmospheric differences. Hot and humid is not fun to work with. Decorating in the winter tends to go a little easier. Now, since this is going to be pretty heavily decorated, it didn't have to be perfect. I typically prefer to use my uh, ceramic disc, not ceramic, my um, plexiglass discs to frost cakes. But since I do these videos at home, not I don't always remember all of my tools. And, you know, I can do it this way. I just prefer with the discs. It's just a fail-safe thing. I just feel safer doing it that way. But this works fine, too. And if it wasn't perfect, it was going to be okay because you're really not going to see it. But I also think my version of perfect and most people's, not most people, but people don't do this for a living's idea of perfect are two different things. So I'm just, I'm really, really picky. Unnecessarily. So sometimes. Um, so yeah, I'm using these tea or what would they be? Boba tea straws. The big fat straws to support the tears. I push them in a circle. And then I use my scissors and I push them in where the buttercream ends. Pull up the straw and then cut it off there. Push them back in, add a little buttercream in the middle and on top of the straws. And put your next layer on. Um, or your next tier on. I did freeze that top tier for a good 15 minutes so that I could touch it when I put it on the cake. I give people credit, 100% credit, when they stack room temperature cakes, I think I would have a heart attack. I've done it, and I can't, I just can't, I can't do it, so I have to have them chilled. I wanted a little bit of accent of color on the white. I didn't want it all white, so I just used those same gel colors, diluted a little bit with a fluffy brush, and just kind of stippled it on. And just place your tails randomly, whatever looks good to your eye, with a little bit of buttercream underneath the ones on the side. And you can manipulate those a little bit once you get them on. If you start doing your other decorations and things don't seem to be lining up the way you want them to, it's okay. You can take things out and move them around. You just have to pick a spot and start. That's the hardest part, just diving in and starting. And these sails on the top, I had added a little bit of white food coloring, diluted white food coloring to the tips so that they look more like crashing waves. Now, I liked the placement of that tail on the top, but I decided you could see the stick too much. So I did end up moving it and dang it, I wish I could have left it there because I think it looked better there placement wise. But if you can see those skewers, it will drive me crazy. So I did move it. And I started at the top with the sails and then I went to the bottom because I wanted to graduate from smaller up to larger and kind of wrapped around the cake. And I wanted to have where those two different, you know, the top and the bottom meet kind of to the back. So if I had to rearrange anything, it's going to be in the back. And I attached these with buttercream. Uh, in hindsight, I think melted chocolate would have been better. I think it would have adhered them to the buttercream a little bit better. But, you know, I just had to keep going back and moving them and putting them back until they decided to, to set up and firm up on me. You'll see me fidgeting a lot here. I 
I wanted those mermaid tails to look like they were just sticking out of the waves. And then we're going to go ahead and put on our starfish and our shells. And here is where I ended up moving things around, as you can see. I added, I think I added a smaller sail or just moved that smaller one. And then relocated the tail and added the starfish. And now I'm just adding some gold and white dragees. And some, some of those are just those little candies, those little chocolate candies. Can't remember the name right now, but you can find any of those at any local craft stores. I do order things online, but I do a lot of local shopping also because I don't always know what I'm going to do in, for a video until I need the supplies now. So there's not always, even with Amazon Prime, sometimes I, I don't have time to wait. So there it is, all done. I think it turned out really, really pretty. I love this technique with the sugar sales, and you may see this again in the future in another version. But anyway, so I hope you liked the video. Thanks for watching. Subscribe, share, comment, all of the things. And again, thank you very much for watching. We'll see you next time. Thanks, guys. Bye.